Hey guys, welcome back to another episode here. In this episode, I am super, super excited to put together an enclosure for my Nephorus cinctus or the Northern Banded Knobtail Geckos. So before I actually get started with talking about this build and stuff like that, I just wanted to do a really quick shout out to another Australian YouTuber that's just kind of just hit the kind of YouTube scene and I reckon he's on a really good trajectory and I reckon he's going to go quite far in this thing. He's setting up a room at the moment. It looks kind of like he's, you know, been a little bit inspired by some of the stuff that I've done here. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm keen to see this. He's kind of doing an episode by episode, building his room and kind of setting it all up. So yeah, guys, make sure you go and check out Red's Cold-Blooded Critters over on YouTube. I'll put a link in the description and I'll also put like a little tag across the screen or something now. He's got about four, maybe five episodes, depending on the time this video comes out, out already. And uh, yeah, guys, make sure you go and give him a follow. He's another Sydney side hurt keeper. So he's out uh, towards the base of the mountains, I think. I think he's out towards Penrith or something like that. But he's got a good taste in geckos. He's got a good taste in monitor lizards. And I'm really excited to see this build actually kind of finish up in his hurt broom. But yeah, guys, make sure you go give Braden a follow. In this episode, I am super, super excited to put together an enclosure for my Nephorus cinctus or the Northern Banded Knobtail geckos. So guys, I've had this trio of <laughs> these banded knobtail geckos sitting behind my chair here in a big tub, kind of like a natural setup, almost like a natural little gecko pit for a long time now. And to be fair, it has been the biggest pain in the bum because to get out of my chair, I have to like jump over it and just a disaster. Anyway, I wanted to get them into something that looked really, really nice and way more natural. And it was about time that I pulled my finger out and just got it done. So something I should also mention as well is whenever you're doing any sort of builds, if you want to kind of keep it naturalistic and a little bit more true to where these animals actually come from, having a little bit of natural history on the actual species goes a far, far way. And to be honest, there's plenty of great websites out there that you can have a look at. iNaturalist is a massive one. Reptiles of Australia, you know, there's all sorts of databases and all sorts online, which is great. I'm a big fan of books personally. I've got a whole book collection and stuff, which I've done a video on and all sorts. But a good one to kind of have a bit of a reference on care and a bit of natural history is the old uh, A Guide to Australian Geckos and Pygopods in Captivity by Danny Brown. This is the Origi Dig book. This is the original. He's done a revised copy now as well. So there should be, I think, a pre-order for the revised copy of this book out now. This was made quite a few years ago now. Still an awesome book if you can find the original one but as i said there is a revised edition out but more specific to the actual kind of species or you know kind of group of uh geckos in particular this one by justin julander and michael planks a fantastic book as well this is the complete knobtail gecko this one goes really deep into natural history and things in there and it's just absolutely awesome to be able to see some of the stuff from uh you know like the, the habitat and that the natural history and you know a bit of basic care and such yeah almost opened it straight to the right page as well you can tell i've been looking at it but you know here's a bit of an idea of these actual geckos and the sorts of stuff that you actually see in here it talks about other species and that that you find with them and all sorts in there i mean yeah, if you're into knobtail geckos, this is definitely a book worth getting. Um, you can just see so many great images of these guys, and they're supplied by all sorts of herpers and stuff from around Australia and overseas as well. Um, but yeah, it's just awesome to be able to actually see these guys in sort of like a little bit of their natural habitat. You can see them there. This is what I'm trying to sort of mimic in my in my building, in my enclosure. Perfect example right here of a banded knobtail gecko sitting underneath a spinifex bush. I mean... I reckon I'm going to get it in this build. There are a few little things that were kind of leading up to this that I wanted to kind of um, 
get ready, so to speak. Uh, you know, like I had to print a background for it and I had to write, find the right image, which I was very lucky that my uh, my good mate supplied me with an image, uh, LAJ Wildlife over on Instagram or Luke Yongen. And on top of that, I was also going through a stage where I had to collect a ton of rock and stuff that kind of mimicked the image and, and all sorts. But yeah, anyway, let's get into it. Let's check out this build. I'm super excited to have this done and to share it with you guys. Let's do it, let's check it out. So first things first, I'm actually cleaning up an old enclosure that I had lying around. This is originally my bearded dragon enclosure from way back when. And uh, yeah, anyway, I kind of flat packed it up and decided that I was going to reuse it one day. So uh, good call on my behalf. Um, so the dimensions on this actual enclosure are 90 centimeters long, 60 centimeters deep, 60 centimeters high. So definitely a nice floor space for these guys to be able to crawl around on. Um, height wise, probably a little bit excess, but you know what? doesn't matter at the end of the day. Uh, it'll kind of make for a nice landscape looking enclosure. And uh, when you kind of see it all put together with the background and stuff that I put in there, it looks really good. Now don't laugh at me using a normal screwdriver to put this thing together. My kid was actually asleep while I was trying to assemble this, so I wasn't going to be cracking out the power drill or anything like that to be able to put this all together. I do crack it out when he wakes up a bit later on. So here you can see I'm actually unboxing or unrolling, I should say, one of my own images. You guys can go and get these from www.frombushtobox.com. That being said, I also do custom work and such as well, so it just depends on what you want and what you're after. And you know, we can kind of have a chat over that if you want to, or you can even give me a DM over on Instagram. As I said, this particular image I was super excited to use. This is from WA. I haven't been able to travel to, travel to WA myself. I'd love to get over there one day and actually see some of the national parks and stuff around there. And just see some of the habitat, like the red rock and the spin effects over that side, just so much different to what you could find over towards like, you know, the east side of the Northern Territory. All right, here's the tools of the trade. A few measuring devices, an old credit card, pen, you know, razor blades, simple stuff, pair of scissors. This is just all to measure up and cut it up. And as you can see, I'm actually gonna time myself putting this build together. So we got 1.35 on the clock. Let's see how quick I can actually get this done. So as you can see, I'm basically starting from one side panel and working my way around the enclosure. And this is just to make sure that the image actually lines up really nicely along the enclosure. The vinyl that I actually use for my backgrounds is really handy too, because it's a bubble free vinyl, which means that you don't actually have to use water or soap or anything like that with it. It just goes on dry. So basically the way you do it is you kind of start from one edge and you line up that edge and very slowly essentially squidgy it with a credit card or you know i'm just using an old license of mine um, in this circumstance too you could use an actual squidgy i would advise that if you have it hanging around i don't believe it or not even after doing so many of these vinyl backgrounds i still just use this same old card that i've got kicking around for any sort of vinyl work that i've got I think it's days are limited though, because after doing this build, I think I snapped it a little bit. So might not be using this one again. But something that I like about this bubble free vinyl is essentially you can kind of half pull the, uh, the background off and kind of readjust it and stuff. And you've got a little bit of work time with it. But the adhesive on the back of it's actually very strong as well. So, you know, once it's on there, it's not coming off easily. I was pretty lucky in this circumstance that this being a bit of a DIY tank, I could kind of, you know, put the panels together as I could, you know, see fit, I suppose. Like I didn't have to put the floor on, I didn't have to have the roof on, I didn't have to have like the glass in and all that sort of stuff. So it was made it pretty easy to work around. Some enclosures can be a little bit more difficult in that circumstance where, you know, you might not be able to remove such parts, but there's always a workaround when using this vinyl stuff. It's pretty it's pretty easy to get into place. It's just as long as you kind of do the prep work, you know, cut to the right sizes and such, then that'll make your life pretty easy. As you can see, once you're on a bit of a roll, it's, pre it's pretty simple stuff. Just go straight on there. So after the last panel goes on and gets into place, there's a little bit of trim work to do just to make sure that we've got a little bit of the edge off from the, the lid of the enclosure and the floor of the enclosure. After that, she's all in place and I don't have to do this one again. And oh look, it only took me about 33 minutes, so you get a pretty instant result. You know, it's not too hard. 
pretty quick to get it in. It's a lot quicker than doing my tile pointing backgrounds and 3D walls and all that sort of gear. Sure, it's not necessarily usable space, but if you want a bit of an alternative, they don't go half bad. A little finno I'd just woken up to, so out comes the drill and I can zip this thing up nice and tight. Uh, no more screwdriver for me, thank goodness. Jesus, that was torture. I can see why people get RSI using those bloody things all the time. Once it was into place, I decided to give it a bit of a rough lick of black acrylic paint, just around the edges where there were either cut edges or the original form ply edges where they were already painted grey just to try to make it look a little bit neater. The next thing I had to do was go and get this big pile of rocks from my courtyard and give them a good wash in some water and kind of get any of the old clay and dirt off them. I've been saving these up for a little while now and uh, yeah, it was good to finally kind of see the actual colours that I thought I could see underneath them and see some of those really nice yellow and red hues. As far as heating this enclosure, I'm keeping it pretty simple by just using a 15 watt heat cord that I'm just going to put a simple coil on and then use a floor tile over the top of just to kind of distribute the heat. So it'll essentially act a bit like a heat mat without sort of like some of the dodgy capabilities of the heat mats. Very, very basic, I know. What are you reckon, boss? Do you approve of the new gecko tank? What do you think? You get distracted by someone else, what about the kicker tank? <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, I was pretty stoked with how this enclosure was starting to turn out. And the LED that I got in there has actually got three different light spectrums on it too. So I can actually choose from 3000 Kelvin, 4500 Kelvin and 6500 Kelvin as well, just depending on what I kind of like the look of. The first thing that I wanted to get into place was their nest box. They've been pretty successfully nesting eggs in this this year and I've got quite a few hatchies out, or at least a handful of hatchies. And uh, I wanted to replace the sand in there with some of the red sand. So if they kicked it out of the nest box, it kind of still blended in with the, the natural surroundings of the enclosure. Once I got all the sand into place here, I just gave it a bit of a dampen down. I did end up adding some more sand in here a bit later on, uh, but yeah, it's pretty simple. Nice little Sistema box there. I decided to rip the handles off just so I can kind of easily take the lid on and off so I can expect things. I did have the handles on there originally, but yeah, no need for the locks. Popped it right over in this corner over here too. So we're gonna to pile some rocks up on top of this and kind of disguise it so it doesn't look like this hideous plastic box in there. I reused most of their substrate out of their existing enclosure as well. So you can see a couple of woodies getting loose in here as well. But basically that was a mix of red sand, play sand, crushed granite, and also some scoria. So it was a pretty diverse group of things. Um, it gave a really sort of natural texture to it though. Kind of that almost like rough gibbery type look. On top of that, I also placed in some saucer pots from plants that I had little holes cut in as hides and I piled a bit of rock on top of those two just to disguise them as well as some sand. Another little added thing that I decided to pop in here was some loose spin effects that I had kicking around, but that just kind of tied it in with the background image. But that was pretty much it. I ended up adding in a little bit more spin effects and also a uh, water bowl down the right hand corner here but something that was really important for me was to kind of have like some really nice rough textured uh, substrate but then also a lot of loose sand as well because these particular banded knobtail geckos love to have sand bath essentially kicking sand over themselves so that was kind of a really good thing to be able to add into that enclosure especially over on the right hand side here you can see i've added in a little bit more spin effect which just kind of brought that corner forward as well so it just kind of gave it that little bit more dimension to it which I think was really important. I love that you can't see the nest box at all, but I could easily access it just through that big rock on top. It also adds a couple of layers of hides, you know, to the geckos as well. They can actually hide under that rock without having the thought of it coming crushing down on them. So that's pretty handy. 
the last thing to do here was to actually pop in these little guys and watch them cruise around in their new home. Thanks heaps for watching this video guys. As always, if you did get something out of it, make sure to drop the video a like, give me a comment, give me some sort of tips on anything you wanna see in the future, as well as what your thoughts were on the enclosure. And guys, if you do wanna support the channel any further, don't forget to go and check out the Teespring store, get yourself some cool merch, there's all sorts of gear over on there. And if you did wanna support the channel even further again, then you can check me out over on Patreon where you can get early access videos, or if you wanna pay a little bit more, then you can also get some Patreon only content as well. Until the next video guys, take Take it easy, I'll catch you then.